So hi, Microbe Hunter here. This here is a microtome. A microtome is a device that allows you to make very, very thin uh, cuts so that you can look at the specimen under the microscope. Um, it belongs uh, to the school where I work, uh, so it's not in my personal property, so I cannot tell you how much it actually cost. Uh, I did find uh, comparable microtomes on eBay that were surprisingly expensive, uh, 300 to 400 euros. So this kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, it does look a little bit antique, I have to admit. Uh, um, and uh, it's not a perfect device I'm going to show you because there is a problem here that this light does not fit into this uh, slot here and um, it's too narrow um, so it's made for different slides standard apparently but in any case I want to show uh, I want to show it to you and I want to make a few microtome cuts so that you can see actually how this works well that's the microtome it's a pretty yeah antique look looking I would say there is a wheel here that you can turn and this raises and lowers the specimen um, yeah, and this round uh, circular part, that is the thing that actually is raised and lowered. And uh, on one side uh, there is um, also a lever that you can push and this uh, operates the clamp. Yeah, for to hold the specimen, so you can see on the, on the hole here, this is where the specimen is being held in place. And uh, there's of course also a razor blade here that can be exchanged uh, in case it ever becomes dull. And uh, the microtome um, can be clamped uh, using uh, this clamp here to a table. Um, and uh, basically this uh, makes it very easy to um, operate uh, because it gives you a very extremely stable, a very stable um, yeah, position here. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to simply try to uh, microtome uh, a few specimens and let's have a closer look on how, how this actually works. Okay, well first of all I'm going to clamp it to the table as I just showed you. This is how it goes. And I'm simply going to clamp it by turning uh, the screw wheel here. Okay, and yeah, it's a conventional one. So this, uh, this clamp here is, is a standard clamp. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to first of all exchange the razor blade. Um, yeah, and uh, as you can see it's quite easy to remove here. You I've removed the blade and I exchanged it now with uh, a new one because this one was already a little bit dull. It's not a sponsored video, I just wanted to mention it's not a sp sponsored video. Um, yeah, so, and that's one of the things that I like about these things here is that uh, they use a standard, uh, yes, a st standard ra razor blades and it's quite easy to simply mount again on the top. And the reason why the screw um, is so large is because it also functions at the same time as a handle, okay? Yeah, um, and that's the way that you can raise and lower the specimen and that's uh, again the clamp. No, that was pushing it the wrong direction, you have to pull it like this yeah then it opens up the, the lever and it's able to hold the specimen in place like this yeah so that's the way how you have to push it top gem it's called the brand uh, but I was not able to find it yeah this is the little uh, slot here and it's too small it's not able to hold the slide it's just for convenience you could be able to place a slide in there so that you're able to move the microtomed specimen directly on the slide. However, it doesn't work. Elderberry marrow is commonly used. Um, some folks also, or I at least try to use all the styrofoam. It's not recommended. Styrofoam really makes the the blade very dull very uh, quickly. And here I have some, yeah, some tree. Uh, how do you call this? Uh, some pine tree, yes, pine tree leaves, and what you have to do is, is uh, I'm making a cut into the elderberry, um, and so that the pine leaf uh, can be can be held in place. Um, and uh, again, styrofoam. I don't know why styrofoam is it principle in principle it does work, but after a few cuts, the blade really becomes dull very quickly. Um, so elderberry has been used uh, quite commonly. So now I'm going to show you how it's clamped in there. You have to push the lever and you have to push the specimen in. Unfortunately, you cannot see it now because my hand is in the way, but now you can see it, okay? And then what you do is, is you slide the whole thing across and it makes a very nice cut, okay? Um, so now we've got the first one cut and then you have to turn the wheel, okay? You have to raise it a little bit. Then you make a second, oh, that was not enough, okay? You have to turn it a little bit more. It's still not enough, see? And yep, now it works. Okay. Well, the first one still didn't uh, quite catch uh, catch it. Okay. The reason is is that the the specimen is a little bit flexible. So when you cut it a little bit and when it's pulled out a little bit, then um, it might not uh, be able to cut a perfect slice here. So and that that's basically not worked. Okay. And so you can see that the elderberry Mary actually um, holds uh, the the pine leaf um, in place. Yeah, and it's a very small, um, yeah, you can see over there. And what uh, you have to do is, is you have to place uh, the specimens directly into water because otherwise they're going to dry out. So that's what I'm doing right now. As you can see it, yeah, almost barely visible. You can see it float away. And uh, 
I've been making several cuts, maybe six, seven or eight. Um, I've always tried different uh, thicknesses. Um, I think one of the important things is simply trial and error. Um, the more often you try, the more, the higher the chance that uh, one of the cuts is going to be the right size. Um, some people are practiced enough that you can actually make all of those cuts uh, without a microtome simply by using their hands. I guess you simply have to try a little bit longer um, until you have a specimen that has the right uh, thickness. If the specimen is too thick, then you have the problem that uh, you're not able to see one single cell layer and uh, then it also takes away way too much light. But one of the nice things here is, is to actually show how sharp a laser blade is. Yeah? And so I'm simply putting everything directly, including the elderberry marrow, directly into the water. Yeah, see, that didn't work anymore. Yeah, so Because sometimes the specimen kind of yeah goes down a little bit, uh, is pushed down. So maybe it was not large enough in size, and so then you simply have to try a few more times. Yep, now it caught it, okay? You know, so you see that uh, you've got to be a little bit patient here as well, okay? And we are, by the way, later I'm going to show you, later I'm going to show you um, the, the specimen. Yeah, you have to pull it out using tweezers because it slipped in all the way. Yeah, so there's still some something left over of the elderberry. And then you have to turn the wheel backward to lower everything again, otherwise you're reach, you've reached the top position and then it's not possible to raise it further. And uh, what I've heard is that sometimes people actually simply use the thermal expansion of the specimen to determine the size, especially if you have some kind of a frozen um, you have frozen specimen and if you let it thaw a little bit, uh, then simply because it expands thermally, that this is already enough to to give it a, uh, to determine the thickness of the slices. You know, see, I'm trying several times. I think the, the, the whole thing sample slipped in all the way too much so I have to use my tweezers to pull everything out again and give it a new start. Yeah. So that's maybe one of the disadvantages of the system. Yeah. See, that's, that's it. Well in any case I've got enough uh, samples already so they're floating around in this uh, little yeah, ball of water and I'm simply gonna put a drop of water on my slide and uh, with uh, a thin section of, uh, of the pine leaf uh, cover glass goes on top of course. Yeah. And then I'll put it under the microscope. But before I do that, I'm going to also cut a carrot. And if you don't have elderberry, some people like to use carrots as well. This also works quite well. Then you simply make a little cut into the carrot and you put the specimen between two slices of carrot. Yeah. So, but what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to cut the carrot and I'm going to look at the carrot itself. And the slices also worked quite nice. I think it was actually even a little bit easier than the elderberry. Don't know why that is the case, but. Uh, Maybe because uh, the sample is moist, this could be a, also an issue. See, it made a very nice, very thin cuts. And you turn it again a little bit. And by the way, this uh, the clamp that holds the specimen in place. Uh, there is a, it's uh, it's uh, a roll. Okay, it looks like a very thick wire, but in reality, it's it's a roll. It's able to rotate so that the specimen is able um, to move up quite uh, quite easily. So I'm also going to put the carrot on the same slide. And of course, also here we put uh, a, a cover glass on top. Yeah, a second, slightly thinner specimen here as well so that we can compare it and uh, cover glass of course as always and uh, then yeah a drop of water on top doesn't hurt because otherwise there are too many air bubbles and then let's have a look what we see okay so yeah by the way that, that's uh, basically on ebay i found two of them over 300 euros almost 400 euros it's absolutely crazy i don't know why they're so expensive here's the second one the same price i have no idea um, I think uh, there's got to be an, a cheaper solution as well. Yeah, so that, that's the pine leaf now. Okay, you can see some air bubbles, but it looks quite okay, I would say. Um, and uh, I'm zooming in a little bit here. You can start to see already the green parts uh, that are doing photosynthesis and some of the cells, of the epidermis, uh, they're not pigmented as, at all. And there are a whole bunch of air bubbles also, which doesn't hurt. I was just uh, checking whether the cut is reasonably thin and by focusing back and forth I can actually see that there are maybe one maximum two cell layers um, that you see here so it actually shows that the cut is reasonably thin yeah here in the center you see individual cells you can also see the individual chloroplasts yeah it's just it was actually one of the first uh, specimens that I from the pine leaf yeah that's the carrot here okay the cells um, are not yet well visible. I'm zooming in a little bit more. And also here I can see that there are maximum of two cell layers that I was able to catch and maybe with a little bit more practice and maybe by optimizing the whole system a little bit, maybe I'm actually able to get even thinner cuts. But uh, I would say that's uh, something where I need to take a little bit more time. Zooming in even more, now you can actually start to see that the one cell layer is, is in focus and the other one is blurry. Yeah, so there are indeed two cell layers. Look very carefully, you see some stuff moving inside the cells. Could be cell organelles that are moving around. 
So you can see that these cells maybe are still alive. I don't know. It doesn't. Could it be Brownian motion? Could be, but I mean, I think it's kind of moving a little fast. That's time lapse now. Okay. This uh, should be it, and I think uh, for today, I think that's enough now. Well, actually, that's it. I wish you um, all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Leave your comments below. I also want to use this opportunity to advertise uh, two other microscopy channels that I have. One is called uh, Microscopic Mysteries. Uh, it's a channel I just started recently in which I simply want to show you some specimens under the microscope and it's up to you to guess what they are. So please visit the channel and also subscribe to it. I put a link below. And my second uh, microscopy channel, the main channel really where I'm actually exploring nature a little bit with the microscope and I'm going to show you all sorts of different things. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.